Good afternoon and welcome to the next in my series of videos on the Kaishu Kata of Buju Ryu Meitokuhan. My name is Ken Talek. I had the good fortune of training in Okinawa with Dai Sensei Yagi Meitoku Sensei between the years of 1985 and 1993. Initially, I traveled back and forth between Canada and Okinawa. Eventually, I moved my family to Japan so we could learn enough Japanese language to be able to get a grasp of what Dai Sensei was trying to explain to me. I never gained great use of the Japanese language, but I was able to get by eventually and have some idea of what Meitoku Sensei was trying to explain to me. Today, I'm going to go into the kata Kururunfa. Kururunfa is one of the katas that came to Okinawa when Higona Kanryo Sensei returned in around the year 1853. Teaching this to his young protégés, Higona Sensei passed on Kururunfa that we know today. The name Kururunfa has a very interesting idea behind it. First, if you look at the characters that most people chose to use to write the word kururunfa, you will see it indicates attacking, smashing, tearing, or breaking away, but some type of combat technique. Whereas the name kururunfa, if you take it in a phonetic manner, indicates things moving like a wheel, i.e. a car is called a kuruma, kururunfa. In many techniques, the arms move like a wheel. This is another idea of the name of kururunfa. Well, let's get started on the techniques. Probably the technique that is most easily identifiable when you see the opening of kururunfa is the nekoashidat shitoke no kamae. We'll start by shifting to our right to Nakawash and bringing the right hand up and across. And then bring the left hand up near the ear. And then shifting down to the Nakawash where the hands retract. Eight. And then we'll try the other side. The left hand goes up, the right hand comes up near the ear. The hips shift, but notice I'm not stepping. And again. And now, left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, right side. Now, let's introduce the sliding foot. As we know from previous lessons, this is called Zuriyash. So we're going to go to the right side. Migi Nekoashida. I'm sorry, we're going to move to the right side. Mihidari Nekoashida Shitoke no Kamae. Hands and feet must start and stop together. Shift that whole body all at once. Ready and go. Up. And right. And up and left. And up and right. And up and left. It's me. So she. Okay, very good. Now, let's talk about the kick that's done next. If you bring your foot up to chamber, kick straight to the side, retract. If you're hitting with the edge of the foot, this can be called sokuto giri. Goes out and back. It's quick. Most people attempt to have the supporting knee flex. During that kick, if you flex and straighten up, you'll be dropping your weight and recovering your weight. This is quite a challenge to perform. During the amount of time the kick is being executed, please practice diligently. 
Okay, from here, you'll go get it up and down. Look at the supporting leg, up and down. Look at the supporting leg. See, down, up. So it goes with the kick. Now, when we're doing it from that watch and dodge, Dai Sensei always has hold the posture tightly, retract faster than the foot goes up. So let's try it that way. Let's move to the left. Nekawash Dutch, okay, no come on. Now draw your foot up your leg. My knee is still pointing exactly as it was. I don't want to have my foot back here, but in tight. And now, out and back quick. And down. Now the other side, ready? It's now up the leg and kick. And again, to the right side, ready? It's knee. Left side, ready? It's knee. And down. Please practice that diligently. Okay. Tai Sabaki is a description of moving the body. Now, in this kata, you're going to see lots of shifting. The very first moves have you shifting to the side. The next move has you making the stance, shifting out of the way and coming back in. Stepping straight in, shifting and coming right back. Now there's a number of applications for this. For instance, you can easily, from this posture, have blocked a punch and grabbed under the guy's arm. You may have his fist here and his elbow here, and then you rotate to create the armbar, and then come back up. You whether you're you're finishing with that opponent, obviously, but you're coming back to your posture, and then we step. Same idea, you could be blocking up a hand, catching under the elbow, shifting into the technique, and coming back. Let's try it again. Sukuyuke, Zenkutsu Dutch, Sanchi Dutch. Hands on the center line. So, the eights. Knee. Son. Now we're coming straight towards the opponent. From this posture, block. Now you could be blocking a kick to the side and then coming back up with a strike. Hands and feet together. See, you can easily be blocking a kick to the side and coming back up with a strike. And we step, block the kick, counter strike. There are many applications for these techniques, but you must remember to learn the technique correctly. So we start with the right foot front, Sun Chin Dutch. Left hand is down on the center line. Right hand is above it. Back of hand to back of hand. I shift my toes out, heel back, Zen Kutsu Dutch. I don't step or slide, I just shift. Then I come back by bringing my toe in and my toe out, or my heel in. I'm back to Sanchin Dodge. When I go to step, as I make my front base, as I make my front base, my lower hand is going to start rotating with the base. It's going to rotate so when it's time, it can scoop up. It's in position by then to scoop straight up. So, it's knee, so, and step, move those hands and you make your base. Hands and feet start and stop together. Ready, shift out, heel to toe, uh, shoulder to heel, straight line, so. And shift and up. When do you think of it as blocking a kick, evading a kick, blocking a kick, counterattacking? 
or evading a strike, arm bar, and counterattacking. Or if you have another idea, practice to do this and demonstrate Go Ju principles throughout the step. Let's go on to the next move where we really see the name Kurudumfa coming out. From any posture, I'm going to step back with my right foot. In this case, I'm going to face to the 45 degree angle. When I do that, I'm going to block with my right hand. My right hand is going to come around like this, just like the warm up procedure. Right around like this, but on that 45. As it gets lower than my chin, my left hand is going to come up, and it's the second part of the block. If you get caught halfway, you're going to be like this, and you're ready to move in on the person. If you're able to execute the entire technique, you're going to end up with your heel of your hand making contact on the arm. Your other hand in front of the solar plexus, never touching the body, right? Never, not, never touching, it's always on. Okay, arm like a wheel, kuru rumfa, it's, and the other side, knee. And the right side, shift in a collage, left hand makes a wheel, right hand comes over. And to the left side, it's up. Knee, up. It's back, back. Up, knee, all the way around. Okay, now, it's knee. We're gonna block right in front of those fingertips. The hand goes all the way across. You might be blocking the guy's arm, but you're making sure he's not gonna counterattack. And then you quick, you grab, and strike up. These techniques are done so quickly, it's hard to even see them sometimes. But you end in this posture. Guarding the center line, your left hand, just like it would be for middle block, except the technique has been uppercut. Let's do it to the right. It's knee. And back. Left. It's sorry. knee. To the right. Ready? It's knee. And to the left. It's knee and to the right. It's knee. In the kata, this is followed by a kick. We're going to separate that right now. So, from this posture, you're going to kick, come back, and slide out. Look, kick, back, slide, and in. You're not coming down like this. I'm not certain how that would work to, as an attacking technique, uh, although I'm sure you can figure something out. My teacher taught me this, this way. From, from the punch, kick, drop, slide that foot out, come into Kijiate Joda. Now I'm slowing it down there a little bit so you can see that step. That way. And then in the shodach. This allows you, if you have an arm in your hand, to come underneath it. This can completely change the meaning of the next technique. Let's do it one more time to the left. To the right. Now, from Shikulach Kijiate Jodan to Nekawash Kijiate Jodan. It's the practice from right up here. Ready? 
Each. Block, strike. Block, grab this arm with the other. Come over. Each. 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 Block the punch. Go underneath it. Grab the guy's arm. Pull the arm ring. Strike under the ear. Okay. Okay. Kurumfa has a lot of arm wheels and tai sabaki. Body shifting. We really see it in this technique that comes to avoid a punch and then come right underneath and arm bar the opponent. So it's a simple outside block, but then you step across. Then my rear foot's coming across my front, similar to Sun Chin. And then the short technique down. The idea is you block the punch, you grab the guy's wrist, you're holding his arm up, you're getting underneath. His arm is over your shoulder. Now you can lift with the power of your legs while you pull with the power of your arm to create the over the shoulder armbar. It's. 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 Okay, please practice diligently. Remember, you can stop or rewind this anytime. Okay. Well, regarding Tai Sabaki and body shifting, probably one of the next signature moves of Kuburunfa is here, where someone has grabbed you, or they're attempting to grab you. They're attempting to grab you with a full Nelson or a similar technique. And you take your arms out and come up and do your best to break the grip where you start back with your head. Then you come all the way down. Now here, maybe I'm gonna grab his leg and lift it. Okay? Someone's trying to get their arms under my arms. And I pop, drop, Sink, grab, come up. If you practiced your yogi undo, you'll be very familiar with that technique and you will not make a mistake. Okay, let's do it again. It's me. So, it's, it's me. So, go. Let's try again. Me. It's me. Song. She. Go. Me. It's me. Song. She. Go. Break the grip. Drop your weight on it to break the grip and drive that head back. Then down you go if you're going to grab his leg. But if you're not, maybe there's another technique coming. Let's just do this one more time, ready? The grab comes, you break the grip, and get ready to grab. Okay, the other technique is this. From the Shiko Dutch, if a kick is coming from the front, you drop and block it. The kick is coming from the front. I'm here, it's, the guys grab me from behind. I take him down, but now there's a kick coming. And I block the kick and block a punch. Right away, the guy is going, kick, punch. And I am going, block, block. Now I've got him, and I come in and I break his balance and throw. I actually used that technique on the street against a guy who was much bigger than I. An individual in Kingston who was out on parole or whatever, who I found abusing a woman. 
I interrupted him, he attacked, I knocked him out. When I let him get up a few minutes later, he decided to try again. And I thought, let's use Kurumtha. And it was the end of him. I was quite impressed. It was not like a movie. In other words, he didn't go flying. But certainly, from this point, where I grabbed his arm, brought his weight down, lifted him back up, he was completely disoriented. And at that time, I stepped to the side and threw him across my leg. It's me, so. From scratch, block the kick, block a punch. Drag him in off his balance and throw. I would like you to end up with your heels tight together and your hands in front of the X. But I'd really like it if you don't do it like a senior citizen. Do it like a young athlete. Okay. You can always rewind to go back and spend more time practicing the individual movements. But at this point, I'd like to go on and put the copper together. So, let's get started. Kururumva. Tearing and smashing or releasing a grip and attacking or arms moving like a wheel. Kururumva. It's me. So, Ready? You're going to slide to your right. Ready? It's slide to your right. Left foot. Slide to your left. Right foot. And again. Ready? Slide to your right. Left kick. Slide to your left. Right kick. Hands and feet start and stop together. One more time. It's knee. It's knee. It's after Yoko Giri Giden, you step forward with Sanchin Dach. Left palm pushes down, right scoops up. Sukuyuke. Teisho, Gidan Teisho Uke. Gidan Teisho Uke, Sukuyuke. It's me. From the beginning, ready? Left kick. Right. Right in front. Now, shift, toes out. Heel back. Straight down. Down, come back into your stance. Two. And two, back in your sunshine notch. Let me move it a little closer for that. So, from the beginning, ready? It's me. It's me. So. It's me. Of course, hands and feet should move together. The next three steps repeat that. So let's actually just go right into it. From here, we make a forward base. See, straighten that foot, push that knee over the toe, and straighten that rear leg into it. Make a forward base. Step. Here's your sukuyuke. Take your ukigire. Knee. So, and make the base, up, two, three, okay, so, kurum fa, it's, ni, it's, ni, it's, ni, so, it's, knee, 
So, it's me. So, very good. Okay, one more time for the right yoko giddy. It's me. So, it's me. So, it's me. So, good. Now, at this time, I'm in midi neck wash, uh, sunshine out. My right foot's in front. I'm going to shift back as if an attack is coming from my left front quadrant. I'm going to shift back to facing a neck wash. So I'm going from facing 12 o'clock on the clock to facing 11 o'clock or 10.30 on the clock. Neck wash. As I do that, now we perform our arm wheel. It's me. Ready? It's and again, from here, ready, it's me, so, it's me, so, it's me, so, it's me. start and stop together. Let's try the right side. Again, the attack is coming from my right 45 degree angle. Right forward. So I would say at like 1.30 to 2 o'clock on the clock. It's me. So Hands and feet start and stop together. from the beginning to that point. Ready? It's me. And then from 45, I return my attention to 12 o'clock. Just shift, don't step. Don't move your foot, just shift your knee in. More I should get. When you're here, your stance has to be correct so you can shift. To your neck wash, to your neck wash, you know, wash, you can come Often we end up having to step an inch or two at that time due to imperfection in stance. You don't want to get stuck out here. You're making your neck wash like this. Sometimes you have to. Just adjust that foot a little bit. 
Pá, ainda com as chadas. Os chutes of the ash, neck lash down. Pull that foot back. As your hands go up. No higher than the eyebrows, eh? Around. Please practice that with great diligence. Remember, you can rewind this at any time. Okay. So, we're going to start with that Moashiuke, which has you facing straight ahead, the same way you started. Miki Neko Moashiuke Moashiuke no Kamai. And now we're going to step across and block with the left hand. Block, step in, and grab. Then they're going to block, step in, and grab. Then slide back to that original spot. So, from here, shift, now, step across like Sanchin. Open hand, outside block. Grab the wrist. Step underneath that arm. Pull both arms. You might be hitting here and pulling here simultaneously standing. Remember, previous kata, there's almost three things happening together, isn't there? Here, we're rising, pulling, and striking rearward. One more time. Now you pull across. Up. Out. Up. In. And drop. Each knee. Bring your hands right up to your knees. And again. From here, I will be facing six o'clock on my clock. And I rotate completely, blocking with the left hand, blocking with the right. You're coming in through posture, it's protected. And up, out. Up, knee and rise from the ultimate point, drop each knee. That technique is done at full speed though. So, from here, it's each knee, song, she, go, this way. Here, we slow down. Yes. The timing of a battle is not just what you might wish it to be. Sometimes, it slows. And then speeds up. Okay, remember doing this in save line? Blocking a punch, blocking a kick, grabbing the guy. Right? Not a raha, no punch. Here we're coming this way. Maybe you're doing the same thing. You could be spinning someone. You could be blocking a punch and turning them. And as you come up, this is just symbolic. But this becomes a very strong technique, it's me. From this shikodach, we're gonna step forward. Jodan Jujuke. Gonna step up, heels tight together, bring the guy down, back up, then turn, and with the heels tight, all the way down again. Right in front. 
Not up on your toes, heels on the floor. Very difficult for some people. Okay, from the front, it's me. Now you should be not recognizing the last steps of being similar to Sansei Ryu Kappa. I'm going to do that same set facing my 3 o'clock instead of my 12 o'clock. Okay? It's me. Son. It's me. Son. She. Go. These are the techniques of Kururunta. We're going to go through it one more time now. And after that, I'm going to have to ask you to rewind and take another look. Hey, let's start back here. Hey, Kururunta. So, this is a Kururun Vakata of Goju Ryu Karate Do Meitoku Ha, as I learned from Dai Sensei Yagi Meitoku 30 years ago. I hope you find it interesting and that you're able to follow this through as it is intended to be a training session on this kata. I'm not saying that you should copy my movement exactly, although I must say I spent years of my life attempting to perform exactly as my teacher had asked me to. But rather, I want you to look on this as a whole 40-minute training session on the Kata Kuru Good luck with your trainings. <laughs>